me take a sip while I think. Hmm. I need to try this again before I make my mind up. Hello there and welcome back to another episode of Cocktails with Kira. My name is Kira, and I'm an Irish girl showing you how to make easy and delicious cocktails at home. In today's video, we're gonna be making another classic whiskey cocktail. Today, I'm gonna to be making a Manhattan. A Manhattan is another whiskey cocktail that admittedly I have never tried before. So as you can imagine, I've never made it before either. So we're gonna do both for the first time today. My experience of whiskey cocktails was pretty limited, but this cocktail series has been changing all that. I've also been on a bit of a voyage of discovery with American whiskeys and bourbons because I had tried so few of them before this series. And seen as I have already taken on such classic whiskey cocktails as the Boulevardier, the Old Fashioned, the Sazerac, it seemed only fair that I finally make and try a Manhattan. So before we get into the history of this cocktail, I would like to take a moment to tell you that I have recently launched a Patreon for my channel. So if you're a fan of my videos here on YouTube, it is a great way of not only supporting my channel, but you can also have access to exclusive content. You can join my community on Patreon and you can see all of the content that is just too tipsy for YouTube. Okay, so let's get into the history of the Manhattan. It is reported that the Manhattan cocktail originated in the Manhattan Club in New York City in the late 1870s. The actual roots of this cocktail have been disputed. It is known that it is a very old cocktail, but stories of how it actually came about tend to vary. One of the main stories reports that it was invented by a Dr. Ian Marshall at a banquet that was hosted by Winston Churchill's mother for then presidential candidate. And apparently this banquet was so popular that punters began requesting the Manhattan style cocktail and thus the drink became fashionable and the Manhattan was born. Now apparently this story has been debunked because allegedly Winston Churchill's mother at that time was in Paris giving birth to Winston Churchill, so she probably wasn't available for a banquet, but that's the story that seems to be perpetuating online, so do with it what you will. Okay, so enough history talk, let's get into the ingredients for a Manhattan. So a Manhattan is one of those fabulously simple three ingredient cocktails. The traditional Manhattan would have been made with a rye whiskey because historically this would have been most available at the time, but nowadays you can also find them being made with bourbon whiskey and Canadian whiskey as well. Canadian whiskey is actually something that I do not know nearly enough about and have not tried enough of, so I'm gonna make a mental note to pick up some Canadian whiskey so I can make some cocktails with it. Anyway, back to the Manhattan. Today we're gonna be using rye whiskey because I want to stick as closely as possible to the traditional method. I have my bottle of Jim Beam rye pre-prohibition style here. I'm gonna use this. I have ordered another bottle of rye, which is on the way. I will tell you more about that when it arrives, but I want to continue using this while I have it. So we're gonna be using that in our Manhattan. Along with our rye whiskey, we're also gonna be using some sweet red vermouth. I have a bottle of Lille here, which I'm going to use. A few people have told me that this is technically not the right sweet red vermouth to use, but for the purposes of this video, I'm gonna use it because I don't have any other sweet red vermouth in the house. Along with our rye and our red vermouth, we're also gonna be using some Angostura bitters. I have a fresh bottle here. So these are our three main ingredients to make a Manhattan. As you can see, it's very simple, three ingredient cocktail, but the garnishes are also very important. And I am absolutely delighted that this is a cocktail that calls for cherries. So of course, I'm bringing out my beloved Luxardo Maraschino cherries. These are so tasty. So of course I'm gonna be using these. I'm definitely gonna go heavy on the cherries. So based on the Boulevardier cocktail that I made a few weeks ago on my channel, I think I might add a little bit of Maraschino cherry syrup into the cocktail. I haven't fully decided yet. I will see how I go. So your garnish can either be Maraschino cherries or orange peel or a mix of both. I'm not 100% sure what I'm gonna do yet. We're just gonna play it by ear and see how we get on. All right, so I've done enough chatting. Let's get to actually making the cocktail. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with my mixing glass. So because the Manhattan is one of those alcohol heavy cocktails that you do not need to shake, I'm gonna be building it in my mixing glass. I've got it right here. We're gonna start by adding 60 mils of the rye whiskey. Now I have already tried this, so I do know what it tastes like, but I'm just gonna have another little taste just to make sure I remember. 
I really like how rye has just a little bit more kick to it. I think it's gonna be really, really nice in this. All right, so let's go in with 60 mils of the rye. Then we're gonna go in with 30 mils of the sweet red vermouth. Let's throw that in. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in with three dashes of the Angostura aromatic bitters. I actually have the orange bitters here as well, but I think this cocktail calls for the aromatic ones. So let's go in with one, two, three. Okay, so now we're gonna fill it up with ice before we start mixing. Because this is such an alcohol heavy cocktail, which personally are my favorite kinds of cocktails, we are gonna have to stir it for about 25 seconds just to dilute it down a little bit and also to really chill it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stir it. I'm actually really bad at counting while I'm stirring. As much as I typically don't like diluting my cocktails, apparently with a Manhattan, this is very important to stir it for the full 25 seconds. That was enough of a stir. Now I'm gonna quickly grab my chilled glass from the freezer. We're gonna be using a beautiful little coupe glass and it should be nicely frosted. So here we have our gorgeously frosted glass. Let's go ahead and get our strainer. Strain this bad boy in and then we just gotta garnish it and then we're done. Well, that color is perfect. Now it is time for probably my favorite part. We get to add the cherries and you best believe I'm gonna be sneaking one. Oh, they're just so delicious. And the syrupy liqueur that they're in is just divine. So I'm gonna go ahead and skewer three cherries because apparently, you wanna garnish things in odd numbers because it's good luck. And I'm just gonna dribble a bit more syrup on them and then let that go in the glass. So I'm basically adding in three syrupy cherries, which I feel like will be enough to give it that little bit more sweetness that I feel like I was lacking in the likes of the Boulevardier. So I'm gonna err on the side of sweeter and see how I get on. Oh my God. I honestly would lick this off the counter. There we have it, our Manhattan is complete. It looks absolutely delectable. I cannot wait to try it. So if you'll join me over on my Dr. Evil chair, let's try her and see how she tastes. All right, so it is time to finally try this cocktail and see what all the fuss is about a Manhattan and why so many of you have been requesting that I finally try this cocktail. I have to say it looks so appealing, but I'm very curious as to how strong this tastes because I know it's very alcohol heavy. I do think the inclusion of a little bit of the syrup from the Maraschino cherries is going to add to it, but I'm not sure. So let's just try it and see what it's like. All right, cheers. Hmm, I need to try this again before I make my mind up. Now, I know that I have kind of a crazy palate and I can drink quite strong tasting things, but this to me tastes so smooth. It doesn't taste as strong as I imagined at all. It's really good. That is fabulous. I'm gonna put it out there and say that I prefer this to a Boulevardier. I know they're not the same cocktail, but they do have similar components this one comes out tops for me. I would say that this is so easy to drink, it's actually dangerous, and that's a lot coming from me. Don't wanna toot my own horn, but I feel like I'm hitting some home runs. This is really good. Now, I've been getting some requests to actually drink more of the drink in the video and have a bit of a chat. So this is the part of the video where I'm gonna answer some Patreon-only questions while I'm enjoying my cocktail. So I have a question here from the lovely Sam Fuller, who is one of my patrons. Out of all the places you've been in ERA, where is your favorite and where haven't you visited and would like to? That is a fantastic question. Let me take a sip while I think. I know this might seem like a cop-out, but my favorite place in Ireland has to be my home county of Galway. Honestly, I'm not just saying that because I am a proud Galwegian, but it is the most beautiful place in the world. When the sun shines in Galway and you're sitting down on the Spanish arch and you're having a little can or an ice cream or a bag of chips, it is heaven on earth. And if you don't know that much about Galway and you wanna see a bit more about it, I actually have a travel vlog from about two or three weeks ago where I brought my friend Eamon and I was basically showing him as a new person to Galway, it from my perspective as someone who's grown up there. It's so great, it's by the sea, the people are amazing. The culture of pubs and music, it's just such a special place. So the second part of this question was a place that I haven't yet visited that I would like to go to. 
And that is a very good question. I have not been everywhere in Ireland. Obviously we are not doing international travel at the moment, but it's the perfect excuse to explore this incredible country that I get to call home. There was one place that I was supposed to visit a couple of months ago, and that's called Ackle. It's in County Mayo. It's a really, really beautiful part of the country. It's on the coast. It's got some really amazing like undulating mountains. It's got an amazing like water sports culture. A lot of people go camping there. And I have another vlog from a couple of weekends ago where I was supposed to go camping there with my whole family, but actually a massive storm was battering the West Coast and there were gale force warnings and we couldn't go camping. So we ended up camping in my own back garden instead. And it was so much fun and the kids absolutely loved it. And if you want to see the vlog for that, I will link it up here because that was so funny. So to answer your question, Sam, Akel is a place that I I really want to go to that I have not been before. So thank you to Sam for asking such a lovely question. And if you want the link to my Patreon, I will pop it in the description below. So seeing as so many of you requested that I make the Manhattan, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that a lot of you know how to make this cocktail. So how did I do? Do you have any tips? Do I need a better rye? I feel like I probably do, but let me know in the comments because I'm always looking to learn. If you liked this video, please do give it a thumbs up as that helps me out a lot. And if you have not already, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I post new cocktail videos every single week. I honestly cannot get over how much the channel has been growing recently. It is so crazy to see, even in the last week, how many new people there are here. So honestly, thank you so much. It is so good to have you here. If you've not subscribed yet, please do consider it. We're having a lot of fun. There's a lot more cocktails to come and I will see you next week for another cocktail video. Cheers.